Hi guys, my name is Adi Ayilaran from Ayilaran Academy and today I have an interest in mechanics problem from the University of Stanford. This is the fallen chain problem and the statement that the problem gives is that a chain of mass M and length L is suspended vertically with its lower end touching the scale. The chain is released and falls onto the scale. What is the reading of the scale when a length X of the chain has fallen? I have an illustration here which shows uh, the extended chain and then as it falls and crumples onto the pan, the, uh, the weight measured by the pan builds up. Now we have to define a mass per unit length because we have the mass of the chain spread across a length. So I've defined a symbol M with the hat dot and the mass per unit length is simply M over L kilograms per meter. So this is just an expression of the mass spread across um, the entire length of the chain. Now I'm going to write an integral which would give us or uh, define to us the entire mass of the chain, assuming that we increment our way from the beginning of the chain to the entire length of the chain. Now the increment is going to be dx because we are traveling in a distance x. And here I'm going to illustrate myself um, basically dividing the length L into increments of dx. When we integrate this expression m dot x with respect to dx between the limits 0 where we have not moved anywhere along the chain and L where we have moved along the full length of the chain, we get the final expression mx over L as the mass of our chain. Note that x and l have the units of meters, so x divided by l cancel effectively and you're left with simply the mass in kilograms of the entire chain. So the full weight of the chain on the uh, pan scale is going to be mg because that's the standard expression for an object's weight due to the force of gravity. However, we have an expression for the full mass, and that mass is mx over L. So we substitute our previous expression into the expression for the weight of the chain. Now this is the first part of what the pan scale would be reading. The pan scale reads not only the weight, but especially if you're dropping an object, it will read the impulse of the object hitting the pan. So one of the definitions of impulse is that it is the force applied multiplied by the time that the force was applied for. As you can see I've boxed it there. Now I'm going to expand this expression to make it more readable. So force from Newton's second law is the rate of change of momentum, either ma or mv or dmv over dt. If the change, if delta t, the change in time, is simply time two minus time one then I can form a new expression which is mv over t multiplied by t2 minus t1. This then leaves me with two expressions for momentum that each are dependent on different points in time. So based upon the expression that I've just written here, it means that whether or not we know the force applied, as long as we know the mass and the velocity, it means that we can define the impulse as the change in momentum. Now this is often uh, misconstrued um, because when people think of change of, of momentum, they, they, they automatically default to force and force is the rate of change of momentum. In this case, the impulse is the change in momentum. The end result of this is that we want to be able to define a force which represents the change in momentum of the chain as it hits the pan. By the way, the symbol for momentum is P, P equals MV. So using our newfound knowledge, I've equated the impulse to the change in momentum over change in time, which is a force. So here I'm just doing some algebraic manipulation. 
with one of the results showing that I have a rate of change of um, a rate change of mass and earlier on we defined an expression for mass which was mx over l so that is what is changing as the chain drops and crumples onto the pan so the end result of this is to have v squared m over l now we need to identify exactly what the v squared is now although the problem statement didn't explicitly say so the problem statement itself implies that we want a general solution so we cannot leave this as v squared because we don't know what the v's are all we know is is that as we are dropping the chain as the chain is dropping and moving through a height which in, in our case is x there is a change of energy there's a change of gravitational potential energy at a certain height which transfers to kinetic energy as the chain moves towards the pan and speeds up due to gravity so we use the common expression half mv squared equals mgx normally it's mgh um, i divide both sides by m multiply both sides by 2 and i have v squared equals 2gx so at the end what i do is that i substitute this v squared into our expression for impulse so this enables us to derive our second expression for the force on the pan and that is 2gxm over l so we have our two expressions therefore once again the reading on the pan scale is due to not only the weight of the chains due to gravity on the pan but also due to the, the change in impulse of the chains hitting the pan So the general solution involves adding our two expressions together. The first expression was the weight of the chains on the pan, which was simply mgx over L. The second expression was the change of impulse, which is also a force of the chain on the pan, which is 2gxm over L. And the total reading from these additions, the total reading on the pan scale is at the end going to be 3gxm over L. So I hope you've enjoyed following through the solution of this problem using fundamental mechanical principles. Try it out for yourself. I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.